Hi, I'm Judy Polinski with Fresh Look Interiors and the Staging and Redesign Academy. Welcome to another episode of Restyle. And I'm Jeff Rice with Decor Designs. If you remember last time we talked about the top five decorating mistakes we see in most of our clients' homes. And today we're going to bring you the tips, tricks, and solutions to fix those mistakes. A common mistake we see in many homes are that people tend to use match sets and while that does look nice, unfortunately it doesn't show any creativity in the space. So how do we fix that problem? Well, one of the things we can do is to break up those match sets or those pairs that you went to the furniture store and bought all together. Right. Yes. What we can do is take, um, let's say, a lamp from another room and use that. By moving your items around the house, it gives you a more eclectic look and it saves them from having to buy all new. Exactly. You don't have to, you just repurpose the things that you already have. Great idea. Yes. One of the other issues we come across very often is our window treatments. Either they're hung too high, hung too low, they're ill fit, or they just don't exist at all. Exactly. It's like a woman getting dressed to go out to dinner and then forgetting to put on jewelry. It just doesn't complete the look. So we definitely have to make sure that the window treatments aren't overlooked in the space. So how do we fix that? Well, one of the solutions is for the hung too low is you always want to look at the space that you have above the window and make sure that you're not hanging that rod directly above the trim. You want to be able to go as high as possible. Exactly. Dropping the rod down to the top of the window actually gives you the illusion of lower ceilings and that's not something that we like to see in a space. It might seem a little weird if the window treatment rod is hung actually higher than the window, but trust me, it actually makes a bigger impact in the space. And you also want to make sure that the window treatments themselves don't stop at the bottom of the window either. It gives no. you the same illusion. It's a kind of a screw up. And then finally, definitely make sure that you have window treatments. Mini blinds just don't really cut it if you're looking no. for a decorator look. You need that softened touch of a, of a soft fabric treatment to go on top of those blinds. Exactly. So last time we got into a little bit of a discussion about whether or not you should have family photos displayed. While I personally don't want to see the entire family tree on a wall, <laughs> on the other hand, I do understand that it is nice to have some family photos around the space. It personalizes the space and makes it your own. So how do we keep from having family photo overload? I, I think the first and most important thing to look at here is how old are the photos that you have out? You don't need to keep that photo of Johnny from when he was in kindergarten out when he's already married with a little one of his own. So pair them down, don't have family photos on every surface. We've done this a hundred times where we've gone mm -hmm. in and the walls are covered and the tabletops are covered with family photos. Try to pick two or three of your favorites and keep those in the room or maybe one large family photo in a room and then spread them out throughout the house or a better solution that I often recommend is limiting family photo groupings to hallways or enclosed spaces where when people walk by them they can actually appreciate the faces in the pictures. Another solution is to mix them up up with the seasons. My, one of my biggest pet peeves is to go into somebody's house in blazing hot July and see all their Christmas pictures out. Save those for Christmas time and the holidays and then switch those out for Easter, for summer, for the fall and that's another way to give you a really fresh look with your pictures. Great idea. Probably one of the biggest things that we see, the biggest mistakes we see, is artwork hung too high. I think we probably see that in about 90% of the homes we go into, wouldn't you say? Exactly. It's like the land of the giants, or I don't know what people are thinking that their artwork has to be at eye level. That's probably what they're thinking. They always hear the adage, artwork at eye level. When it's hung at the ceiling, I want to know whose eye level that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a better idea to actually pair your furniture with the stuff that it surrounds. Like in this example, we actually have a nice piece of artwork. You'll notice it's a little lower, it's behind the lamp, but that's okay because it's actually paired with rather than floating high above the sofa. So what are some of the rules of thumb we could probably give people as far as heights? Of heights. Um, eye level means from a seated position. That's what eye level means. Um, Jeff is 6'2", I'm 5'2", so if you go by eye level from a standing position, that obviously doesn't work. Our eye level is very different. So when you hear it referred to being hung at eye level, it means from a seated position because most rooms you're in, you're seated in. And most people are a re relatively the same height while they're seated. Another good rule of thumb, if you're pairing it with a love seat or a sofa like this piece is, it's about six inches above the back of the piece of furniture is a good idea. Or if you're measuring from the floor, about 60 inches to the center of the piece of artwork. So that probably brings us to the top problem that we see in most spaces and that would be accessory overload. If you don't love it, get rid of it. Exactly. Okay, so we're not going to sit here and tell you what you have to like or not like in your space, but what we are going to try to do is help you pare things down a little bit so the things that you have 
are more prominent and make more of a statement in the space, correct? Yes, and, and they're not overwhelming, not only to yourself, but to those visiting your space as well. Exactly. Judy talked about seasonal uh, things when you're talking about photos and things of that nature. That could also apply to accessories. Yes, it, exactly. I can't tell you how many times we've gone into homes and the snowman and the Christmas trees and the fall decor is out again in the middle of summer. Those things should be out in the season that they belong in. That way they're fresh, they're new, they're exciting and they're fun for you again and you actually see them when you bring them back out. And I think another good rule of thumb when you're accessorizing bookcases or when you're accessorizing tabletop surfaces and things of that nature, make sure that you leave negative space and by that I mean empty space. It allows mm -hmm. your eye to flow past it and then come to another item and it gives it more prominence and more substance in the space so you can pare it down to threes and fives. Um, it's a good idea to accessorize in odd numbers so if you have a lamp and a plant and a couple of books or something that would be considered three items and, um, and then you leave negative space. You can even layer things but make sure that you have surface area in your bookcases and on your tabletop surfaces that are not cluttered. So there you have it. Those are the five top decorating mistakes that we see most often in our clients' homes and the tips, tricks, and solutions that we find work most often to solve them. And if you want to recap that or check it out again, feel free to follow us at www.restylewithjeffandjudy.blogspot.com. Thank you for joining us. I'm Judy Polinski with Fresh Look Interiors and the Staging and Redesign Academy. And I'm Jeff Rice with Decor Designs. And together, and together we'll, make we'll make the most, most of your good, good taste. taste.